What's the best type of exercise for lowering glucose levels in type 2 diabetes? Let's take a look. Hello and welcome again everybody, Mark Green here, Diabetes Diet Guy, talking all things diabetes and healthy living. Now today we are looking at the best strategies from an exercise perspective for getting your glucose levels down. Now when I work with patients and clients alike, one of the key things I want to address is how active they're being and where we can add in extra activity into their daily routines, their weekly routines, because of the power of its glucose lowering effects and also the health benefits that it brings. But are there specific strategies that are more effective than others? Well, to aid this conversation, I've delved into the medical literature and compared it against my own experiences, both from my own training, but also working with clients from when I was a personal trainer and as a dietitian working with patients. And I think we have an answer. So let's take a look. Well, as per usual, we need to look at some of the basics about the principles of exercise and physical activity. So we can keep it real simple, but essentially we have two different types of exercise. We have aerobic activity, which we can call cardio. Everyone seems to be pretty familiar with this. This is kind of exercise where you're walking or running or cycling, rowing, swimming, kind of a lower intensity activity. You can increase the, the intensity to a point, but at some point it's gonna tip over into a different type of exercise, which we call anaerobic, or you might more commonly know this as high intensity training. And then the last type that we have is uh, resistance training, which is more common for like your weightlifting, carrying, you know, that kind of muscle burn, those type of exercises. So we have three different types. Then we also have lots of different variables that we can examine that are gonna influence how effective these are. So this goes back to my old personal training days. We have this analogy where we have something called fit. Frequency, intensity, time, and type of training. Now, of course, if we are comparing different exercise strategies against one another, then we also need to think about how often people are doing it. So if I'm comparing a cardio protocol, but the participants only did it two days a week against resistance training, but they did it five days a week, we haven't got a fair fight there. So I can't really compare the outcome and the results. I can only look at them at face value. Now, it'd be really nice if you could get loads of results for only a few sessions a week, that'd be great. Um, but unfortunately with exercise, it does appear to be one of these things that the more you do, the better it gets. You get out what you put in essentially. So that's the starting principles that we need to work with. So the next question is, is there a combination of exercise that appears better? And the answer is, yes, there is. Now, the first thing to mention is, regardless of the type of exercise that you're doing, all of these interventions improve glucose levels. So if you're thinking about changing your lifestyle or getting active, then my first message to you, and if you take anything from this video, is just start. Whether it's going for a walk, starting to take up exercise, or trying to integrate physical activity into your daily life, whether you're taking the stairs rather than the lift, just do it it all lowers glucose levels. Time and time again, we see this happening. However, if we really wanna take it to the next level, there are some interventions that we can do. One thing that I've found when I've looked at lots of different studies is that the best results come when we start to combine cardiovascular exercise with resistance exercise. Now that might be together in the same session, or it might be a split protocol where one day you do something cardio-based and then another time you do resistance training. When we combine these, HbA1c levels drop beyond when we just do resistance, just do cardio, and compared also to control groups who do nothing. So if you're thinking about making a change to your lifestyle or taking up exercise, integrating a combination of these two appears to have the greatest glucose lowering effects. However, we can take it one step further because we haven't touched on this anaerobic hit stuff yet. So let's just delve into that a little bit more. So what we have with this, we have different types of intensity. We have low intensity training. Sorry, that's a bit wonky. We have medium intensity training and we have high intensity training. Now, the way we define this is we're working off a certain heart rate. And also there's a point when you'll notice when you're exercising that your breathing rate changes. And that's essentially when your body starts to produce too much lactic acid. It's actually not really lactic acid, but anyway, we won't go there. Um, 
where your body can't clear the acidity in its blood and therefore it starts to burn. So you'll see the breathing rate increase as you're trying to breathe off the carbon and rid your body of that acidic environment, but you can't and that's when you have to eventually reduce the intensity. And it's that principle is, is why basically that it's the 100 meter sprint and not the 10,000 meter sprint. So typically, just for the average person, high intensity is going to be above a heart rate of 70 to 80 percent max heart rate. Can be lower for detrained individuals, which in fairness tends to be a lot of my patients. For someone that's really fit, say a Mo Farah, this is going to be even higher, and which is why these people, um, these athletes, can sustain ridiculous paces running a marathon in two hours. And, and it appears like they're in this high intensity zone, but actually they're still, flat, they're still hovering in this medium intensity zone for them. Anyone else tries to keep up with them, they'll be burning. They'll be here, but that's because they're not conditioned for it. Then medium intensity, you know, there's no true definition, but let's say it's going to be somewhere between 50 and 70 to 80%. And then low intensity is going to be less than 50% maximum heart rate. So this is going to be like walking, it's going to be sitting, it's going to be doing chores around the house. So this is kind of the intensity you're living at when you're doing or integrating physical activity into your daily life. You park up and then you walk to the shop, say, as opposed to driving to the closest possible space that you can squeeze out. So what we find is when we start to look into the details of this, it's, it's quite logical really, but when we look at high intensity exercise, you, we find that you can get basically the same outcomes in terms of glucose lowering effect, fitness, and even weight loss in a much shorter duration compared to the medium intensity and low intensity. So you've got to do these for a much longer period compared to the high intensity. Now the problem is not everyone's conditioned enough to hit the high intensity, so you might need to work up towards this. But if you can do it, there's a lot of research to show that not only can you reduce the frequency each week, in fact, one article I found showed that people who only did three sessions a week of 10 minutes a day were as effective as doing 30 to 45 minutes, five days a week. So much more, or I should say the same results for much less. Now, of course, if you're someone that can't get to this high intensity level, then we need to live in this area here. So we need to start to build up but it does mean that you're gonna to have to do it for a longer duration to get the same results. So most of my patients are living in this low intensity area, but they only, a lot of them are only doing it for a very short duration. They're kind of doing the minimum of the recommendations, 30 minutes a day at best. And it's just not enough. It's better than nothing, but you're not gonna get those results of lowering the glucose levels as you would if you're able to up the ante and get the heart rate up, which is the key here. We need to get that heart rate up. Then if we can start to get into the medium intensity zone and the high intensity zone, and we're combining resistance and cardiovascular exercises, then we have got the best of all three worlds. In terms of the frequency, there's no true definition of how much you need to be doing each week. The minimum recommendations for general health is 30 minutes a day, five days a week. The part of that message that's lost is minimum. The other part of that message that is missed is two resistance training sessions a week. In, incorporated within that. So that's a starting point. And just from my own experience, although it is anecdotal, I find that with exercise, as I said before, you really get out what you put in. So the more you can do it, the better. Obviously, if you're starting from zero, then don't push it too much because we don't want you to be getting injured or have um, counterproductive outcomes. So you need to build up gradually and build that base. But once you have the base in place, if you excuse the rhyme, then you need to then start doing it regularly. A good rule of thumb that I like to put to patients is exercise more days in the week than you don't. So that's at least four days a week. And we don't have to go mad guys, like we're not talking about eight hour sessions, but just try and integrate it into your lifestyle that you're already doing if we're talking about this low intensity stuff. And then if you're gonna do active exercise, then we want to try and get into these areas because that's where you get the truest benefits, the biggest benefits. And then if you're actually doing that, plus trying to get the low intensity stuff in when you can, just integrating into everyday life, now we're starting to get to a place where you're being very consistent with it. And consistency is key here. So when we start piecing it all together, 
it looks like there are some good strategies that we can put in place for our patients in order to get them the best glucose lowering results. So there you have it guys, so let's just summarize. So cardio and resistance appears to be the best, and if you can perform it at a higher intensity, that takes you even further in terms of those glucose lowering results. Don't try and kill yourself doing that, build your base first, and just work with your circumstances. So if you can only achieve low intensity, then live there for a while and try and build up the duration. That'll improve your fitness, then you can start to try and improve the intensity and then build from there. And that's it guys. So I hope you found that video useful. Remember to like and subscribe if you found it useful. Share it with your friends as it gets us in front of more people, which really helps us out and makes it worthwhile doing this in the first place. And of course, if you are trying to make a change, but you're struggling and you need an extra helping hand, we do offer consultancy services. Head over to diabetesdietguy.com, get in touch. We'll be happy to see if we can help. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later.